I can assume just based on looking at their rosters that there probably would have been a bit more money in Brisbane. Yeah, um, but cares? he's made a football decision who first cares? with yeah. his. Career in mind Which I think is Fucking refreshing And let's just put it this way In two years from now Once he leaves What are we in 2000, 2023 Whatever position he wants to play Centre or, full, or centre or winger He'll be the best in, in the, in the, He'll be playing for Australia um, He'll be the best In his position In two years Welcome back to the show and go It's in a It's not the new studio But we've got a few new lights In here feeling pretty uh, Big things coming in this space bro Before we rip into the footy What do we got man? No, nah, I don't know Just a few lights in, in around here Feels like a little bit more um, legit, and I feel like, feel like we're trending that way, so I'm excited. We're getting there. Like getting, there got, getting there, getting there. We got this area getting done on Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday, that area the following day, so... Give us two weeks. I reckon two weeks will be sort two of weeks primed and ready to go. Show and go will be looking a lot different. Yeah, and lights, yeah. Are, lights are very important, so we're trying to get lights up on the roof too, which is sounds harder than it sounds. Yeah, it is hard. <laughs> you know who does his best work under the lights? Tommy Trebojevic. I love, I, love <laughs> <laughs> I love these transitions, mate. Do you think about these or do you no, wing them? No, I think about it as you're talking. I'm not listening. I'm just yeah. thinking about my transition. Uh, Tommy Turbo, we seem to be speaking about him every week now, but it's justified. That was, obviously, I watch every Warriors game with a keen interest, um, and it's unfortunate that it happened against my boys, but that was one of the best individual regular season performances I've ever fucking seen. He mm. was untouchable. Um, a thousand line breaks, a thousand line break assists, a couple of tries as well. What did you make of Tommy's game? And I, I will get into the New South Wales stuff after that, but he's becoming a little bit undeniable in that fullback position, man. Yeah, um, certain times in certain players' careers and not everyone can sort of experience this. They sort of have this aura about them. And right now he's got that in and around him um, and got it by a fucking the spadeful. So he's got this aura around him where like, he's so good right now that when, you, when you're defending up against him, it's like, like people sort of hold him back off and that's why he can get line breaks and all that sort of stuff. But I think he's rolling into one of those... And we talk about this a lot. <coughs> um, when you attach a year to the player, like 05, Benji, you know, yeah. Benny Barber, 2012, all that sort of stuff there. I think 2021 is going to be the Tommy Turbo year. So, man, he, he's he's literally single-handedly flipped that whole side on. on Mate, like you said, like they're just outside the eight now. It's in that nine. They're not far off. So they're def definitely going to be playing finals football if he's fit. We're going to get into sort of that gap between the, the top sides and, the, and the, the rest later on. But he puts them right in that sort of Parramatta category where they can beat the Melbournes and Penriths if he's playing. Mm. Like he's that good at the moment. And I spoke, we spoke about it like when we were having coffee. That first half, I thought that was the best, one of the best first halves I've seen from a fullback. And I was talking about Roger in that first half. And then Tommy just came out in the second and just took over. I know he's got the first two tries anyway in the first half. Mm. It was brilliant. But that was like watching those two go head to head. I was like, fuck, Roger's getting the upper hand here. The Warriors are up eight at the half. Like it's looking good. The thing about Warriors Manly games is two things are guaranteed. They're always going to be close and Manly's always going to win. I knew Manly were going to come back into it. And when Tommy's in the side like that, they just flow so much different. And it was one of those games where you talk about how he makes everyone around him better. Cheers was pretty quiet. Mm. Kieran was pretty quiet Schuster was very quiet as well It was literally just him mm. and, the, and the old pool, pool cleaner out at Cena Morgan Harper Yeah Shout out, shout out to Morgan Harper but He's vibey um, <laughs> He's very vibey But he just he, he changes so much about their side That, that fourth Whether it's just that fourth tackle Quick legs tackle play of the ball Or he's slicing you open from 50 So uh, it was an unreal performance And I think justifiably I heard a lot of post-match sort of chatter about When are we going to start to really consider New South Wales stuff Playing him at fullback, I know you're a Teddy guy. I'm a Teddy guy. I think we still need to put some oh, respect a, on his name. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a Tommy guy as well. Like yeah. I obviously got to know Tommy on a personal level when I was at Manly and I know what he's about as well. So like we talked about Nathan Cleary just before. Like and Tommy doesn't have a weakness in his game either. No. Like he cares. He's skillful. He's tall. He's fast. He's fit. Like he's he's the complete package. And if you're ever on like rugby league live and you, you're trying to build a player, you, you build a Tommy Turbo. You know what I mean? So because he cares and like, man, he, he's right up there. Nathan Cleary is the best. I reckon right now he'd be a better player in form compared to Tedesco. But yeah. in saying that, I still put Tedesco at the one because you just want all your best players in. on the field. Yeah, yeah. And and it doesn't matter if he plays at centre, it doesn't matter if he plays at winger, he's going to have an influence on the game. And you looked at him play at centre that time he was over in Perth. He wasn't playing normal centre, he was playing like a second fullback. Yeah. He, would, he would sort of tag that inside ball off Jacob Jaboyevic a little bit and he scored that try where he jumped over Kalen off, off the back of a kick as well. So... Man, you put him at centre, you put him at winger, it doesn't really matter because he's going to turn up, he's going to care, and he's going to make a difference on the result. And then you've got Teddy to worry about as well. So, yeah, man, scary times. When you say he cares, I think the evidence of that was the, the last play of the game when Reese Walsh threw the cut out ball when what, Ken's not easy to push into the sideline. Yeah. He was the first guy there. He he had already done enough in that game that if he wasn't busting his ass to get over there, you would have forgiven him. And he busts his ass across with Jace, uh, Saab, Jason Saab. Yeah. Um, 
bundled him to touch and, and save the game. So he's an absolute freak. I'm but like when, when I say he cares, like he cares, cares. Like he's like if they lose him and Down. his brother, they're like this, bro. <laughs> and it's almost depressing to be around. I already had my jeans halfway out, ready to go to the Wolfie. But yeah, like you, you'll never. I can't think of anyone right now within there. Maybe Reynolds, Adam Reynolds, that cares about their club as much as the Trebojevic's care about Manly. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the younger boy getting on as well. He was 18th man, I think, yesterday. Yep. The third Trebojevic, so that's going to be sick. Um, is he playing the back row? I think he does. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah. Um, he had the old forearm, big forearm guard on, so that's a telltale sign you play in the middle. <laughs> so Apparently he's, got, he's blessed by the Trebojevic gene as well. Oh, yeah. Got the tripod of Doom The old tripod of Yeah, yeah, yeah. so... Fuck, if some people just have it all, huh? <laughs> um, late Daily M charge? I know there was a yeah, little easy, bit of whispers. Easy, he's, easy. I know he's come in very late, but he's going to be collecting three points for that side just about every time they play. So. Yeah, so like you said, no one's going to really take points off him. Cheers, Mike Jagger game together. Yeah. Um, Jakey does a lot of fucking grindy work, which is not really appreciated by Daily M. He's folks. a one to two pointer most, yeah, <laughs> most games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he can sneak up there, but um, anything sort of stopping Tommy is his own health. So. Yeah, I, I thought Jerome Hughes could have been, and we're going to – move on to the Melbourne Penrith stuff in a second. I thought Jerome Hughes could have been a little Deli and Smokey, but he's sort of blessed and cursed by the fact he's in such a good team that mm. Fox scores six tries, he's probably going to get a few Deli in points, mm. money. Maybe a couple. Pappy, yeah. you know what I mean? So um, moving on to them then. Uh, well, just quickly before we jump off that game, we spoke when we were coming in here about Sammy Walker and a big storyline in that Manly game as well was Reese Walsh came on. He was getting load managed with his workload. Bro, put um, him, uh, came on late, scored a try, almost set up the game. And I tell you what, if he doesn't throw that to Ken and goes back off that big yeah, station, yeah, he's a big foot, chance. Hey, I think he's a big chance. So, um, what did you make of the sort of what do you make in general? Like, not just talking about Reese Walsh specifically, but that whole load managing these young guys like that. I get it. Like, mm. um, especially like I think you load manage different types of players. I don't think he's one that you need to load manage right now. Um, he's three games into his career. He's played fullback. He played five eight. And now he's come off the bench. Like, give him like. Bit of stability. Mm. Uh, hey, Reese, you're going to be our six for the next five weeks. I need you to focus. And when you're at six, you're making about maybe 22 to 30 tackles. It's not like you're in the middle and you're tackling like big guys, you know what I mean? All yeah. the time, all the time. So I don't, I, I don't think load management was the right thing for him. Yeah. Like you throw, I think you just throw him in and you get your best players on the field. I think Cody Nicarima probably moves to nine pretty soon mm. or get Wade Egan to start the game there and get Cody off the bench. And, um, Get Chanel in there as well because he was he was right yesterday. Chanel he, was very good yesterday. Yeah, yeah like, he's keen. The he's good thing keen, about yeah. he, like he'll he'll organize shape and around him. And, and I know it's not always the right plays, but he's he's throwing something at you. Mm. So he's not asking a million dollar question, but he's not asking a hit up as well. So he's kind of asking those right questions, and he'll learn the game. Um, I seen a post the other day that he's played under three. First grade coaches, three different systems, yeah. and he's only about 25 games in. But the Baker Mayfield of the NRL. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And like you, you forget about that type of stuff. He's willing on defense. So, like, there's not many halves that come up and try and put on a shot. <laughs> he can he, fucking shot guys. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, surprisingly, like, he's surprisingly strong. So, I think you just throw them two in, and Roger's, Roger will steady the ship. Mm. Uh, but once Cody Nicker remembers that hooker and starts getting offloads and stuff, he's, he's really interesting to watch. So, I think the Roosters have nailed it with, with what they do with Sam Walker. I think teams, like, a, whether you have a Reese Walsh or it's going to be um, Joseph Swiley, mm. have a look at what the Roosters are doing because they're sort of the epitome of how to do everything when it comes to club football. And they're jabbing Sammy Walker up left, right and centre to get him on the field because they know that stability for him is playing as much as he can for as long as he can. You, know, you don't play him until he's busted and broken. Yeah. But if Sammy Walker can play, he's not coming off the bench or he's not missing a game here and there just because he's 18. Yeah. If he can play, he's playing. So I think guys, like teams like the Warriors and every club for that matter can have a look at the Roosters example and say, that's probably how you should be doing things. Mm. They, they, they don't really tend to miss. Yeah, I do see the other side of it as well. But like... Like, he's three games in. Like, he's fucking he's excited. Fit. He's, he's 18. Yeah. Like, he'll work out the next day and won't even be sore. Like, that's what it's like when you're 18. And, like, you just got to throw him in, man. Just got to bounce back off a, off a bender as well when you're 18. Yeah. <laughs> you can only learn so many lessons by training. You learn, you actually learn your education by being on the football, by being fatigued and seeing shape coming at you and then trying to learn how to win games. And all that education is really important. You can't read about it. You can't, you can't can't really coach it. You can't really train about it. They, all that stuff can prepare you for it, but you learn it by actually doing it. You learn it by actually being in those and understanding what fatigue feels like and, and you're under the bright lights and yeah. fucking the whole crowd hates you. You, you. you can only learn those lessons while playing NRL football and you just got to throw them in. Throw them in, man. Uh, jumping over to the big guns, we have spoke about it a few weeks ago, but I think it's worth bringing up again. We had the Storm put 50 on Souths and then we had... The undefeated Panthers, rather, undefeated season, baby, do 48 on the Sharks. Mm. The gap now, it seems to be even more evident. 
like I, I'm sort of that school of thought. I think there's always pretty much every year there's a clear top four and everyone else. And I think if Souths and the Roosters were healthy, we'd have that again this year. Um, but obviously at the moment it's Melbourne, Penrith, Daylight, and then everyone else. What do you make about the gap at the moment? Um, do you know what? I really one thing I do look at like these gaps. Like, do you remember that period when it was always just Broncos versus Cowboys, and like, the games were divided by like one or two points, and maybe it Thursday? On the weekend. I mean, they're down the other end of the table, but yeah. Field goal game. <laughs> but like, I think this next little <coughs> two to three year period is just going to be um, Penrith versus Melbourne all the time. Cool. Like, all all the cool games are going to go there. All the golden points because there's not much difference. Um, Melbourne's probably the only side I can see beating Penrith. Yeah, like with a full squad and stuff like that. I know Souths are there, but they just got like they need everyone on deck and yeah, the trails coming yeah. back and um, Cam Murray. But put fifty point points on a really good side like that as well. It's like pretty crazy, man. Sharks are a good side. We've got they're Townsend gr- and Johnson. Like yeah. they're, they're experienced boys as well. Yeah, boys. I think I'll put forty eight on them. So, um, but I th- the one positive is I think we're moving to that really good game of um, Penrith first Melbourne all the time. Or sort of the Broncos, like. They were playing together for like three, four years against each other. And I think there's only have like one point difference between them all. It was so much fun. Eh? Yeah. Sort of 2015 to like 17. Yeah, it was a good of, time, man. Yeah. And like, it's, that's just what it is. And um, I think the other competition is within between fourth and 12th. Yeah. Like that's another competition within itself to see who just, who these boys knock over before they get to the grand final. Craziest thing about Melbourne is they're doing it by going up in fours because money uh, spraying them left yeah. and right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. they, they've gone 40, 42 and 50 consecutive weeks and he's kicking it like 30 percent so <laughs> that's pretty mental um yeah when's I, pappy I, back <coughs> this week i believe well oh. he was in the extended squad last week so what the fuck and nico hines has been playing out of his skin as well if that boy like, needs I to pick up something somewhere eh? someone's gonna sign him and, and he's gonna be an amazing signing he's such a i know it's like a cliche term but he just looks like such a natural football player man everything comes easy to him he never looks like he's Busting his ass, yeah. gassing. He's he's silky. I'm, I'm a big Nico Hines fan. Um, but on, on Melbourne, yeah, you mentioned Penrith before. Again, I, I came out round four. Remember I said it in round four that they'll go undefeated and everyone bagged me. But I'm going to keep saying it. I see when I have a look at their schedule, I know the origin period is going to be tough. But this gap, what I think this gap has done, I'll be interested to get your thoughts on this. I reckon those previous years where the good teams like can drop those random Sunday games against the Tigers or you know you get you know Canberra in the cold or Cronulla and like a gritty Saturday or whatever mm. and you drop that I think they're too far ahead now I don't yeah. see Penrith like Penrith turn up every single fucking week man so I don't see them losing those games so when I look at their schedule I know they got Para in round 16 which is going to be a big game because Para flying and then they don't have another sort well, I, I, every game's tough but the real contest is Melbourne in Melbourne in round 20 I think they could be fucking nineteen and zero going into that game. Yeah, which would be unreal. Yeah, um, like so. Like, that's just yeah. That's just my thoughts on their season anyway. But like yeah. I said, but they they make football look fun, and it yeah. obviously helps when you're winning. But they enjoy everything. Them, them at training looks fun. Rocking up to the games looks fun. Afterwards looks fun. Yeah, I mean they're at promos, and it helps when you're winning. Like everything's easy when you're winning. But they make everything about football look fun. Like they get up for defense. If someone's in a fight, they're all in there. Are they yeah, all? Like <laughs> you talk about culture, and it's and like you go into businesses, you go into sports teams. They always try and develop culture straight away, where they've already got culture developed within them. They rep the area, and that's sort of like something that they're proud of. And <coughs> notoriously, Western Sydney hasn't been an area that a lot of people say that they're proud to come from. But now it's a fucking vibey place, and they've got a probably the best team in the comp rocking. So, mm. man, it's, it's a good time to be out of Penrith and be a Penrith fan because they had plenty of tough years. Like when I was there, <laughs> I was flat out getting crowds. So it's struggle street. Yeah, it's a good time. Brian Toto hitting the Jordan semi lip bite as well. When oh, he's on yeah. camera. <laughs> and it's entertaining, bro. Like yeah. old school, old heads go like, oh, he's showing off. But like, Fuck bro, yeah. someone stop him then. Like, yeah. <laughs> someone try and put a shot on. You're just going to get bumped off anyway. So yeah. let the boys be, man. Walking 300 metres upfield, Brian Toto. <laughs> um, jump it over then. Oh, just before we move off the storm, um, I wanted to, you know, you were kind of big on, we talked about Xavier Coates potentially signing there. It came out yesterday that it's all official and signed on the dotted line. Obviously a massive loss for Brisbane, but when you're losing a guy like Ado Carr, if you had to look across the league and go, who's the next replacement you'd <sighs> want? Fuck, he's a decent replacement. <laughs> Melbourne, they're just too smart. They yeah. just offer uh, offer way too much um, opportunity to play not only rep football, which he's already playing, but playing finals. And and like everyone would have been worried about with Cam Smith and that lo- leaving, but their style of football now is more entertaining to watch than when like the big three were playing. Like yeah. we'll, obviously it looked cool because when Billy Slater's in the backfield and he's sprinting and no one can catch him, that shit looks vibey as fuck. But some of their tries now they're just fun to watch. Shows the genius of Craig Bellamy that he can transition from that. 
sort of really Structure, on and off the field, yeah. regimented, professional, like keep your socks up and shave sort of vibe. Yeah. So now he lets cheese and money be themselves. Happy's got his own haircut. You <laughs> know what I, mean? yeah. I don't know if that slides a couple of years ago like, at yeah, Melbourne. I doubt it. I know Wayne Bennett doesn't let it slide. Like if you rock up for vibey haircut, he'll just tell you to shave it off. Yeah, so I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, and like <laughs> old school headmaster. Hey, it's, a, it's a mature decision from Coates because man, that's a mature. Like, imagine having that's what I want. All to the say, noise like, in and around yeah. Broncos going like, oh, all this club's giving you so much and all that. They start trying to throw that shit on you, mm. and he's just going, no, nah, I, I want to make a business decision for my career, and the best move for him right now is to go to Melbourne. That's what I wanted to ask you. Like, he's I, I don't pretend to know the dollars and cents of it all. I can assume just based on looking at their rosters that there probably would have been a bit more money in Brisbane. Yeah, um, but cares? he's made a football decision who first cares? with yeah. his career in mind, which I think is fucking refreshing. And let's just put it this way: in two years from now, once he leaves, what, what are we in two thousand two thousand and twenty three? Whatever position he wants to play, center or full, a center or a winger, he'll be the best in, in the in the, he'll be playing for Australia. Um, he'll be the best in his position in two years. Clip it, Lukey. Clip yeah, it, baby. Clip that, Lukey. <laughs> um, speaking of Brisbane, magic round, baby. Looks like we're on. Um, yeah. Obviously, it was a bit yeah. of a scare last week with all the COVID stuff, but uh, unless something changes in the next 72, 48 hours, uh, the boys are off, eh? Yeah, cool. This is going to be fun. Um, obviously, we get a lot of people coming up to us while we're out and about, but that's going to be like an elite centric environment. It's magic round. A lot of people know that as well. So, um, a lot of people associate us with league, and we do a lot of football content. And a lot of people know Simi and Chico. And even Loki to a point now, and Simi's in there as well. So um, it's going to be cool. Uh, we've set up two, um, like people can go up and meet them as well. So we're going to let everyone know about where they're going to be. Um, they're going to be at uh, the Caxton on Friday with Jarrell Yaoye and Bloke in the Bar, 5.30 to 7 maybe. Yeah. And uh, then they're going to the footy. Yeah, going yeah. to the footy, be there as well. They're going to film some content during the day. They might be going to a party after that. Who knows? Um, but on Friday, on Saturday, at, the, at this point in time, they're going to be at Cargo, which is in Fortitude Valley. Um, they're going to be there from like 10.30 to 12 up, upstairs in the Sky Garden. So it's going to be a little rop, roped off area. Um, it's going to be sign up pre-interest. If you guys do want to go, we'll get your name on the list. and You can go up and meet the boys and have a few beers with the boys and stuff. It'll be vibey. How are we going to go about that? How do people sort of... I don't sign up it. We haven't. Yeah, haven't. Yet. I've got to email the lady back today, but um, I think people will know full details by sort of Wednesday, cool. Thursday. And a lot of them is just going to be, oh, just DM X Cargo and put your name on the list and you'll get to skip the line and go see the boys. Gone. Yeah, the YKTR <laughs> on the rise. <laughs> I've lost, and on, on that as well, the kit. Uh, this is actually a genuine question for me. When and where are people going to be able to buy the Glizzy and Scope? Uh, scope tees, do we know yet? Yeah, it's going to just be pre sale. So the kind cool. of how we do all our YKTR sports stuff. We're trying to speed that up. It's just kind of. More, more reactive at the moment but uh, over the course of the whole weekend from Monday to Sunday um, the boys are going to be promoting their own gear there's obviously like whoever loses has to get a tattoo which they both agreed on yeah that was <laughs> yeah I was going I thought Scope was going to put up a bit of a fight he was like yeah sweet yeah, I think he's more worried about his hair <laughs> yeah 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 so scope. someone's like shave your hair off but um, the both both the boys have agreed. Like I haven't like forced them into it. They kind of want to do it. I say, oh, this would be a cool thing. I Elk said, boy vibes. <laughs> yeah, I go. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. And the, and the both of them just go, nah, fuck it. Let's try and get a tattoo. Yeah. So there's a bit of a wager on the line, which is super interesting. But over the course of the whole weekend, you're gonna be able to buy um, scope and Simi's gear. So they came out mad the tees as well. The yeah, yeah. So we'll get, those, well. get some samples today. But it should be a good day. Um, great marketing experience as well. And hopefully we can meet a few fans that the boys have never met before. So it's exciting. And a bit of footy up there as well. How about that? All yeah. <laughs> was it games up there? Yeah. yeah. Who's playing? Yeah. Oh, every NRL team. Yeah, cool. Beauty. All right, I think that'll do us for the show and go today, boss. Thanks, my guy. Later.